Welcome to my home where we are going to recreate Lesson 17, the end of a Shabbos meal. We are going to serve and eat dessert and show how to properly clear off the table on Shabbos. In my home, before we serve dessert, we usually read from a sefer, from a book, some of the laws of Shabbos. We're currently using Rabbi Daniel Broids, Broids Learn Shabbos in Three Minutes a Day, probably by Adir Press. I'd like to read one paragraph which is relevant to the topic of today's lesson. Although we have seen that muktza items may not be handled and moved, Chazal, our rabbis, incorporated a few exceptions. When one is disgusted by the presence of something, one may move it even if it's muktza. Included in this leniency is something that is a genuine eyesore, is making disturbing noise, has a bad smell, or would cause embarrassment from visitors. A few examples, a dead animal, if there's a dead mouse in the house, even though the dead mouse is muktza, one is allowed to remove it because it would be disturbing to have it. Dirty plates, refuse, bones, and fruits and vegetable seeds, a smelly diaper. Even though these things are muktza, as they have no use, however, because they are disgusting, Chazal permitted moving them out of sight. We will discuss this in the uh, lesson as we go as we go by so i'm going to start my dessert i'm going to have some pistachio nuts and i think i'll take a piece of pumpkin cake baruch pre You might be asking, why did I say a bracha on the pistachio nuts? We know that when you eat a meal where you wash and you say a mozi over bread, the bread covers the meal food and you don't have to say a bracha on it. That's true. However, according to most opinions, when it comes to dessert, most dessert foods are not covered by the bracha. If you want guidance with this, discuss it with your rabbi, you could email me, or I'm going to leave a reference at the end of the video so you could do further, re further research yourself if you'd like. So eating pistachio nuts brings up a, a question. The shells are muktza. These are things that have no use. They're objects that we're not supposed to handle on Shabbos. When you open up a pistachio nut, you're taking the meat out, you're eating it, that's fine. What do you do with the muktza object? Muktza object that's in your hand can be handled till you put it down. The recommended thing to do is put it on a plate. Therefore, when you're clearing off the table, you're not going to have to pick up the muktza object in your hand. You'll be able to do what we call tiltul meratzad. You're going to pick up the plate and only indirectly carry the muktza and put the plate in the garbage. That's not going to be a problem. So this is as far as this. Now, but I'd like to take the uh, same thing. I'd like to eat a, a clementine. And we have the exact same thing with the clementine. You peel a clementine. So the clementine is something that you eat, the fruit of the clementine, but the shell, the peel of the clementine, is not something that's edible. Maybe orange peels are edible, but clementines are bitter, and the shell, the clementine peel is not something that you eat. If I was to put this down on the table. Oh no, this is now something that's mukta that's on the table. We'll have to see when we clear off the table how we're going to have to deal with that. I put the most of the peel on the plate. We'll do tiltul meratzad and that will be okay. Another issue I want to talk about in this lesson is borer. In previous lessons we discussed Bora selecting bad from good, taking edible from not edible. Solace from Ochel is something that has to be done properly on Shabbos. And we said in the previous a previous lesson, the formula, the simple formula to remember is Ochel Biad Miad. You're allowed to take the part that you want, the food from the not food from the not edible, biad by hand and not with an implement, miad for immediate use. And if you notice over here, 
there is an assortment of cookies. There's chocolate cookies, there's oatmeal cookies, there's whole wheat, whole wheat uh, peanut butter, chocolate chip cookies. Now, if I would look at these as a, a mixture, and if you would, even if you'd consider them one edible, one not edible, if I would want some oatmeal cookies, if I take that, I'm taking an oatmeal cookie, the ochel, with my hand for immediate use, there would be no uh, bow rare problem, selecting problem. We're going to come to that in a moment. So, so I'd like to have uh, l'chaim, uh, have something to help this go down. We'll have something nice to, to drink for our own Shabbos. Take some cookie, some non-dairy ice cream. Some ice cream that I made. This is uh, Uh, coffee cinnamon ice cream. Enjoy. Mm. Let's make another bracha. We could say a uh, bracha of Borupi Adama on a papaya. Papaya. Some people suggest maybe it should really be a bar priya eights, but uh, most opinions say that the brach we say on the papyri is bar priya dama. Baruch atal adonai no yom ha'nem elchom bar priya dama. One of the great things about Shabbos is you can indulge, eat as much as you want, and it's all for the mitzvah. It's not uh, oh you don't want you to go overboard. You want to keep it, make sure it's healthy, but. A little bit, one of everything, get a variety of things. Mm. Chocolate rumble, wonderful. Okay, we get the point, we finish the meal. For now, we'll say the Birch of Samozon, we'll wash our hands. Say the grace at the end of the meal, finish the meal. And after we've done that, now we go, we segue to the next section, next portion, which is clearing off the table. Now, well, the issues that I'll, we have, the first issue is the the, um, the muktzah issue. We already said that if you put the shells and the things that are muktzah on a tape, on a plate, no problem. You're able to. Pick up the plate. What you're doing is tiltul minatzad. I'm not picking up the muktzah in my hands. I'm picking up the plate. I'm putting the plate in the garbage. That is okay. But over here, there are some shells that are on the table. Remember, I put some of the clementine peel on the table. And that's muktzah. So what I could do is as follows. I could do, well, again, tiltul minatzad. I could take a, a fork and move that, tilt on the that side. Well, same thing over here, tilt on the that side. Put it, put the plate in the garbage pail and that would be okay. Or if let's say that wasn't a way that I could do it, for some reason or other, I didn't have a plate available. So as we read and learned Shabbos in just three minutes a day, that when something would be disturbing you if it's on the table, if I finished clearing off the table and there'd be uh, clementine and peels on the table and there'd be pistachio shells on the table would be disturbing to my Shabbos, it would, I wouldn't enjoy Shabbos, then we could always employ what we read, graph shell ray, something that's as disturbing to you, you're allowed to pick up on Shabbos, I'd even be allowed to pick them up and throw them in the garbage. Uh, another thing, another bow rare issue that could come up selecting. You see that the guest that we invited to come for Shabbos didn't come. So I have over here a clean setting. Over there, my child didn't, my, 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 my daughter didn't have, didn't use her fork or, and her knife. My wife didn't have any fish. So if I was to take these to put them away. So I could take the plate and put it away with the other clean plate. But if I go like this right now, I've just created a mixture. And if I go into the kitchen with these clean 
this clean cutlery. I go to the drawer where they stored and take the knife and put it together with the knives. Take the big fork and put it together with the big fork. What I'm doing, I'm selecting something to put away and that's for use right now, for later use. We said the formula for bor that is permissible is only miyad. It's ochel, I'm taking the good, but it has to be miyad for immediate use. I'm not selecting it to use now. These are going to be used later. So this is going to be a problem. So let's recreate. What should I have done? What I should do is, what I should do is like this. And it's a little bit more difficult, but you first take in one hand, let's say the small fork, the spoon, spoon, go over there, take the spoon, go to the kitchen with these, not as a mixture, but the small forks away put the spoons away, then come back and take the big forks in one hand, the knife in the other hand, go around and then put them away separately. If I avoid creating a mixture, then there's not going to be a problem to start off with. Similarly, when I'm clearing off the table, notice there's a difference between the cake and the cookies. The cakes, I have two types of cakes on the table. There's, uh, there's a, uh, um, pumpkin cake, and there is uh, chocolate cake, but those are on the platter separate from each other. There's no mixture, but the cookies were put away as an, but it was put out as an assortment of cookies. If I take those into the kitchen, I could put the chocolate cake together with the part of the chocolate cake that wasn't cut and put it away. Pumpkin cake with the pumpkin cake, put it away. There was no mixture. But if I take this into the kitchen, I can't take apart the mixture put the chocolate cookies with the chocolate cookies, the oatmeal cookies with the oatmeal cookies, etc. because that would be taking, selecting one from the other one, putting them in places where they belong for a later use. So what would I have, I would have to do is either leave this out and munch on it Shabbos afternoon, whatever it might be, and put it away, might say Shabbos, or I could put it, all away, put it away now on Shabbos as a mixture and separate them later. That's the only way that I'd be able to, to do that. There's another thing that's prohibited on Shabbos, which is hachana, to do something on Shabbos, preparing for Motzai Shabbos. I'm supposed to do things on Shabbos for Shabbos, not, not nothing else. If I'm taking something on Shabbos and doing it for Motzai Shabbos, that is a potential problem. So the question is, am I allowed to take the dishes that were used by this meal and load the dishwasher? So you say that I'm loading the dishwasher because my soy shop is I don't want to take the time. I could do it now. What I could do, I should do now, so I won't have to do it later. If that's why you're doing it, that's preparing for my soy shop, so that should be a problem. But if the reason that you're putting into the dishwasher is because you don't have any room in your kitchen, and if you're going to put them in your kitchen, then your kitchen is going to look messy, and it's not going to be something that you'll, you'll enjoy and it'll take away for, from the appreciation and from the enjoyment of Shabbos. It'll enhance your Shabbos experience if you put them in the dishwasher now. And I'm not loading them in the dishwasher now because I want to wash them on my Tzai Shabbos. I'm loading them in the dishwasher now because that is enhancing my Shabbos experience. The rest of my Shabbos, I'm doing it here now for later, that would be okay. Similarly, when I'm clearing off the table, even if I'm not eating Shalashudis later at home and I'm going to go into shul, I don't need the table. But if the table is going to remain messy, I'm not cleaning off, clearing off the table for so that it'll be clean in my Tzai Shabbos. I'm clearing off the table so that I should enjoy Shabbos today. But let's say in the afternoon you have Sudesh Lishis right at the end of Shabbos. Then and there's 15 minutes before Shabbos and you finish your Sudesh Lishis, you shouldn't really clear off the table then. Because then you're not clearing off the table for to enhance your Shabbos experience, you're here clearing off the table so that you won't have to do it in my Tzai Shabbos, and that's something that you really shouldn't do. I'd like to finish the lesson with just with, with one thing. The rabbis tell us that a person should try every day to say at least 100 blessings. Moshe Rabbeinu told us, Moses tells us in Deuteronomy, Vatal Yisrael, and now Israel, Mo Hashem what does Hashem ask of you? Kim liyerahosi, only to fear me, to be feel, feel reverence and awe of Hashem. The rabbis tell us one of the greatest ways to have to bring the consciousness of Hashem to our to our life experience is to recite blessings. 
we take a cookie and we say, Baruch Atah Hashem, we bless you, Hashem, who's created the food. Take an apple and say, bless Hashem, who's created the food of the tree. That brings Hashem into our life, and it helps give us this feeling of reverence and awe and, appreci- awe and appreciation of Hashem. Rabbi say, Mo Hashem Meimach, the word Mo, Mem Hey, what does Hashem ask of you, could really be read as Meah. Hashem asks for a hundred, a hundred blessings we should try to say every day. Every day when a person prays their the Shachris, the morning service, the afternoon service, the evening service, the Amidah, the Shmon Esrei, has 19 blessings in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. You're well on your way to saying 100 blessings a day. Shabbos, the services are smaller. The Shmon Esrei only has seven blessings, not 19. It's much harder for a person to fill in the rest to get 100 blessings. So we're encouraged on Shabbos, Shabbos afternoon, after you've taken a nap, to take a snack, take a cookie and say a piece of cake, say bar mezonos, take a fruit and say bar priyayit, say the, the after blessing afterwards, so that we'll, in our Shabbos experience, have what a lot of people call Shabbos party, so that they're not only just to bring enjoyment of Shabbos, but to say more blessings on Shabbos, so the May of brachos, a hundred blessings that we say every day, to bring Hashem into our life, make our appreciation of of God something that's real, we should have that experience on Shabbos also. What we've discussed in this lesson is one, how to avoid borer issues, selecting issues on Shabbos, how to easily avoid any issues of dealing with muktzah on Shabbos, and what was one allowed to do on Shabbos to prepare, not to prepare for Mitzvah Shabbos, but to enhance the Shabbos experience, what one is allowed and was not allowed to do. Hope you have your appreciation of Shabbos. Enjoy Shabbos. Thank you for listening.